Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. Well, we've gone through six seasons of Clean Cut already, and so far we've covered the proper use of philosophy and logic, the existence of God, which religion is correct, the most common arguments advanced by atheists, why we should obey God, and some basic definitions for both real and fake virtues. Season 7, however, will be much longer than any of the previous seasons, and may take me a while to complete. This season we'll be talking about law. Some people today view law as just a restriction or a rule which I could get punished for breaking. However, that's definitely not what it is. After all, not all laws are restrictive. For example, if you live in America, you can assemble peacefully. That might be considered restrictive if you're one of the people who wants to prevent people from peacefully assembling, but for everybody else it's not. We can also prove that laws aren't just rules you can be punished for breaking, because if you break the law and no one punishes or can punish you for it, it's still a law. So, what is law? Well, according to paragraph 1951 of the Catechism, law is a rule of conduct enacted by competent authority for the sake of the common good. In other words, an authority figure who actually knows what they're doing sets up a rule of conduct in order to protect people. This authority figure can be human, or it can be God. In either case, obeying the law is a moral matter, which needs to be factored into moral decisions. Now, when you get down to it, there is no real division within the law. It's just about doing the right thing. However, there are divisions in terms of how we see or learn the law. So let's discuss those. First is the eternal law, or the true nature of the law. This is really just another way of saying God, when you get down to it, since God is the source and true nature of all goodness, and law is good. Secondly, natural law. This means an inner sense of the difference between right and wrong written on the hearts of every human being. Even if you don't want to admit that a certain action, like theft, is morally wrong, or even if stealing brings you great joy, you may still understand that stealing is wrong if you don't really enjoy doing it while others are watching. Third is revealed law. This is when God specifically communicates with human beings to deliver commands of the law, and these come in two classifications, Old Testament laws, which are still valid today, and New Testament revelations and laws, or the law of the gospel. Finally, there are laws instituted by human beings, either church laws, known as canon law, or civil laws set up by the government or local officials for the benefit of society. Why should we take time to know the law? The answer is that if we don't, we'll be ignorant of the law and might disobey it by accident. We want to be able to obey God's laws because if we can't, then we're not pleasing to him. And considering how important our relationship with God is, it's absolutely essential that we put sincere effort into obeying his laws to the point of putting it first in our priorities. This, after all, is an expression of trust in and charity towards God, and nothing's more important than that. So our job, which is to say, my job, is to come to a better understanding of the law so as to obey it. Now, of course, coming to a better understanding of God is always helpful, and paying attention to which actions are reprehensible according to natural law might also be helpful. But because this is clean cut, we're going to start with revealed law, since those are laws which are not only universal, but which have clear limits and boundaries to explore, as well as some less than clear implications which need explaining as well. I'll get to gospel law and canon law eventually as well, but for now, we'll be studying the old law commands which still apply today and are still gravely serious today, namely the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm not going to devote a single episode to each command, simply because it would take too long to explain and be much too complicated. Instead, each command will have, on average, several episodes devoted to it, covering things like the oneness of God, images and idols, perceptions of false gods, the Lord's Day, and so forth. I can't wait to explore all these subjects with a fine-tooth comb, and I hope you'll stick around for it. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.